My heartbreaking tale of betrayal and moving on in Cancun. Me, 32M, I'm a middle manager at a huge Fortune 25 company. I've been career focused lately, but I had my wild party days when I was younger. Allison, 31F, my girlfriend of eight years, and we've been living together for the last four. She's an office manager at a big veterinary practice. She's my soulmate, best friend, partner in crime, and I thought, my future wife. Leslie, 31F, Allison's best friend since second grade. They do everything together. Dance classes, high school prom and homecoming, and Allison was Leslie's maid of honor. They're sorority sisters from college and more like sisters than friends. Leslie works as a physician assistant. Vicky, 31F, another sorority sister and great friends with Allison and Leslie. She's not as close as Leslie, but still a constant companion. Vicky is an accountant at a major firm. Brett, 30M, Leslie's new husband after dating for about five years. A decent guy, but not really a great friend, more like a very good acquaintance. He works for a large plumbing slash HVIC company, doing sales and installation for big industrial and commercial systems. He's a bit of a party boy, not very serious about his career, and kind of immature in my opinion. Jacob, 29M Vicky's long-term boyfriend. They've been dating for about four years and living together for one. Nice enough guy, but more like Brett personality-wise. Jacob works as a landman contracting to oil and gas companies. Honestly, I'm not sure what he does exactly. He travels a lot and makes good money. So, here's the background. Allison and I met in college. She was everything I ever wanted in a partner. Gorgeous, smart, funny, extroverted, and responsible. We didn't start dating until after graduation when we realized we'd be working in the same city. We made it official pretty quickly. Four years into our relationship, I bought a house in my name and we moved in together. Our relationship was great. We communicated well, had amazing sex, and we both made good money. With my salary, bonus and her salary, we cleared $350 in K a year, so we were very comfortable financially. Since it was my house and I made more money, I paid the mortgage and most of the bills. I even paid off her student loans and car note. She saved most of her money and built a healthy 401k, which I was fine with. Hell, we were going to get married soon, so it didn't matter, or so I thought. During our relationship, we hung out with Leslie and Brett and Vicky and Jacob quite often. Dinners, bowling, pool halls, movie nights, backyard barbecues, skiing, lake getaways, etc. Early on, we went clubbing quite a bit, but Allison and I grew tired of that scene, so we don't do that much anymore. The other two couples still club and party quite a bit. Like I said, I loved hanging out with Leslie and Vicky, and the guys were okay, but I never really got close with either of them. They were very good friends with each other though. But we were all friendly enough and got along great. Now on to the good stuff. Since we often do stuff as three couples, I was fine with the girls planning a 10-day trip to Cancun for the six of us. We were going to stay in a really nice high-end adults-only resort. Allison and I were really looking forward to the trip, as we could both use the downtime, relaxation, and alone time. Unbeknownst to Allison, I was also planning to propose to her on this trip, and I had a ring waiting to give to her in Mexico. The week before the trip, wouldn't you know it, we had a crisis at work. My company needed me to stay. As is the policy in my company, if you have prepaid plans that need to be cancelled last minute for critical business reasons, the company will reimburse you. So I got reimbursed for my flight and resort fee. While I was disappointed, I explained to Allison and she understood. Since she was really looking forward to going and spending time with her friends, I encouraged her to go by herself and have a great time. I didn't tell her about the ring and figured I'd propose shortly after she returned. When the day came, I said goodbye, and she took off for the 10-day trip. While she was there, I got a few obligatory texts and pics saying how much she missed me and wished I was there. Here's where the worm turns. On day four of the 10-day trip, I got a call from a very good friend of mine, David, saying he needed to talk to me. David is probably my closest friend and also works with Brett, and they are fairly good friends. Anyway, while in Mexico, I guess Brett called David to ask about some work stuff, and the conversation eventually turned to how the Cancun vacation was going. Brett proceeded to tell David that the trip was fulfilling some of his wildest sexual fantasies, that the five of them were engaging in all sorts of sexual exploits, including a group orgy. The dumb fuck Brett was stupid enough to document the activities and even sent some pics and videos to confirm his story, which David initially called bullshit. 
This is what David wanted to talk about. This next part is difficult for me to type, since I have to relive some of the worst emotional pain I have ever felt. I met David and he got right into it, telling me exactly what was going on in Cancun with the five of them. Like David, I also called bullshit and thought he was messing with me, until he said he had some proof that might be hard for me to see. I got super serious really quick, and my stomach flip-flopped. He showed me his phone. While I won't get into all the sordid details, suffice it to say his story was confirmed, and I was broken to my core. Among the stuff he showed me, there were several pictures of Allison getting spit-roasted by Brett and Jacob, pics of her having anal sex while eating Leslie's pussy, and a short video of the three girls having a very enthusiastic lesbian threesome. I was… I don't know, devastated seems too light a word to describe my emotions. The crazy thing is, we had talked about FFM threesomes before, and she always refused, saying she just wasn't into girls. She also knew one of my deepest fantasies was to watch her make love to another woman. She always laughed and said that was never going to happen. I decided then and there, obviously, that we were done. I asked David to send the pics and vids to me, in case I needed to confront her with the proof. Over the next few days I packed as much of her stuff as I could into a bunch of boxes and stacked them in the living room. I had a locksmith rekey the locks on four doors into the house. And then just sat back and waited for her to return. After the trip, she was scheduled to come home late on a Monday night, landing around 11 p.m. Since it was late, she told me not to worry about picking her up, she would do her home. I just sat in the living room with a bourbon and waited. About 12.30 am, I heard her key wiggling unsuccessfully in the lock. After several attempts, she rang the doorbell. There's a window right next to the front door, and I opened that window a few inches. She asked what was going on and to let her in. I just said she was never stepping foot in my house ever again, we were through, and to get the hell off my stoop. She was honestly dumbfounded, yelling, asking why I was doing this. I said if you don't know, you are a complete idiot, on top of being a liar. She got silent. She knew I knew. She started sobbing, begging me to let her in, saying let her explain, she just wants to talk etc. I told her forget it, it's not happening, and she's not coming in. Through her sobs, she asked me where she was supposed to go. I told her I left her keys in her car and she should go back and live with her buddies. And I closed the window, blocked her number, turned on some music and just zoned out. About 10 minutes later, I saw her car back out of the driveway. After Allison left, about 45 minutes later, I got a call from her older brother James. James lives in the same city and is fairly close to Allison. James is a great guy, a good friend, and someone I respect and enjoy being around. He told me Allison showed up on his doorstep crying hysterically and saying she fucked up. James didn't get any details from Allison, but he let her in and told her she could stay as long as she needed. James is a prince. I told James yes, we broke up. No, it wasn't repairable and that I would tell him the story in detail some other time. When I said our relationship wasn't repairable, he immediately understood that to mean she cheated and said he was sorry. I also told James that there were about a dozen boxes filled with her stuff that needed to be moved out of my house. He understood and said he would take care of it. True to his word, James and a friend showed up and took all the boxes. We chatted a bit, he said he didn't need any details, but understood and agreed that cheating is impossible to come back from. Fast forward about three weeks. I haven't seen or talked to Allison or any of her friends since the night she left. Who should I get a text from but none other than Leslie? She asked me to meet her to talk. I told her I wasn't interested in anything she had to say. She begged and pleaded with me, said she just wanted to talk and she wasn't going to try to change my mind. On the off chance that I could get some of the why, I agreed to meet her for coffee. My conversation with Leslie was eye-opening to say the least. First, she told me how sorry she was and that what happened in Mexico was spontaneous and not planned. She said that the other couples had talked about swinging in the past but had never done anything. Things just got out of hand and Allison had implied that I would be okay with her participation. She proceeded to tell me Allison was not doing well. She quit her job because she just couldn't drag herself out of bed, had lost a ton of weight, she didn't have much to lose to begin with, isn't taking care of herself or her hygiene very well, and has rarely left the house. I took it all in with some indifference. I basically told Leslie that those were Allison's problems, not mine and Allison would have to deal with it. I told Leslie I don't necessarily hate Allison, but I just don't care about her or what happens to her any longer. She may as well be a stranger living in another country at this point. 
Leslie simply could not comprehend my indifference. She begged me to talk to Allison, to let her explain and give her some closure. I told Leslie I wasn't interested in any excuses, reasons, justifications, explanations, or anything else. I didn't know her closure and wasn't particularly interested in helping her get over her guilt. But I did have some questions. I asked if that was the first time Allison cheated on me, and she sheepishly said, yes with a guy. WH. I asked her if she and Allison had had sex before, and she lowered her eyes and said yes. Apparently they have been enjoying each other's pusses on the regular since high school. My jaw absolutely hit the floor. I was in a stupor. I told Leslie about my fantasies about Allison, and Leslie already knew all about them. She had even encouraged Allison to invite her into a threesome with me, or just have sex with Allison while I watched. Leslie was turned on by the idea, but Allison refused. I can't fathom why. I also found out that this was not the first time the girls, Allison, Leslie and Vicky, had engaged in a lesbian threesome. They had not done it often, but definitely not the first time. Again, my heart just fucking sunk. So these two fucking losers, Brett and Jacob, got to share my fantasies with my girlfriend. I thanked Leslie for the talk, but told her that solidified in my mind that I wanted nothing to do with Allison ever again, and told her I would also be cutting off the other two couples for obvious reasons. Leslie left the conversation in tears. I sincerely felt nothing for Allison and didn't care where she wound up. But still, it felt like a fucking elephant was sitting on my chest. So two questions, Redditors. MTA for refusing to speak to Allison? And how do I get back into dating? I'm not one for dating apps, and Allison and I have been together for so long that I am out of the game. If you've read this far, thanks. Story 2. How my girlfriend's girl's trip could have led to me being cheated on. I'm a 23-year-old guy, and I've been in a relationship with my girlfriend, also 23, for three years. Lately, things have felt off between us. She hasn't been as affectionate or as engaged as she used to be. When I asked her about it, she told me it was because she was dealing with unwanted advances from older men at work, and I didn't think much of it. A month ago, she went on a girl's trip with two of her best friends, one of whom I know pretty well. Before she returned, she asked me to give her a day to rest, so I went to visit my parents instead. Everything seemed fine until she came over to my place to spend time with my family and watch a movie. That evening we went back to her house, and as I was about to take a shower, I received a message from her best friend. She wanted to talk to me urgently. His friend called me and delivered a bombshell. During the trip, my girlfriend had confided in them that she had given oral sex to a co-worker and was thinking about meeting him again, even though she loved me. She apologized profusely, saying she couldn't bear the thought of me proposing while my girlfriend was doing this. She revealed that my girlfriend had been debating whether to block this guy or not. I was in shock. I rushed out of the bathroom, trembling, and started looking through my girlfriend's phone. She caught me, took the phone, and seemed to be hiding something. I asked her to talk in her room, and when I confronted her about the guy and another man who'd been sending her nude pictures, she denied everything and kept asking me who told me this. When she finally handed over her phone, I didn't find anything that directly confirmed the accusations. I left her house so shaken I could barely drive, and went to a nearby park to call the friend back for more details. She told me that my girlfriend had been texting this guy about a BDSM book they were discussing. She also mentioned that my girlfriend had said she wasn't worried about me checking her phone because I only ever used it to get pictures of her, pictures that I love having to brighten my day. Unfortunately, the friend couldn't provide any screenshots or proof because they don't save their chats on Snapchat. The conversation ended with her crying and apologizing repeatedly, which only deepened my confusion and pain. I'm still trying to piece everything together, and I'm left questioning what's real and what's not. It's been an incredibly tough and confusing experience, and I'm reaching out for any advice or support you might have. After the call with her friend, I was completely lost, staring into space, unable to think straight. My girlfriend asked if we could talk, and I agreed. She got into my car and we drove around while she tried to explain everything. She was clearly upset and crying, telling me that the conversation her friend described never happened and that she hadn't done anything wrong. I asked her for the guy's phone number, which she reluctantly gave me. During our drive she kept asking why I didn't trust her and pointed out that it was her friend who had talked about cheating on her boyfriend during the trip, suggesting that maybe her friend made up the story to discredit anything my girlfriend said. When I brought up the BDSM book incident, she specifically named the book and insisted that the guy wasn't involved in that conversation. 
I asked her to block the guys I'd mention, and she agreed. I also remembered an issue from the early days of our relationship when she told me a guy was flirting with her at work and later admitted they'd hung out. She even pointed out his house to me once while I was driving. It felt like deja vu. Despite my doubts, I love her deeply and decided to believe her. I got us some food, took her home, and we spent some time cuddling. While we were in bed, she started blocking the guys. I noticed the number she'd given me didn't match the number saved for the contact. When I tried to check, she deleted it before I could see anything. She told me it must have been a different number and that she'd given me the correct one. After leaving, I did a reverse search on the number she gave me and it turned out to be one of her friend's numbers. I confronted her and she admitted it was her friend's number. She said she gave it to me because she didn't want the guy to spread rumors about her at work. Now, she's telling me she'll get the correct number from me when she's back at work so I can talk to the guy. I'm at a point where I think I know what the right decision is, but I'd really appreciate any advice or opinions on what to do next. Story 3. I found hidden photos of a colleague on my wife's phone. Have I been betrayed? We are both 41. My wife, of 11 years, and I had been out for a wonderful day with our kids watching cricket. When we got home, I was looking at photos and was aware that my wife had taken some of me and the kids too. I spotted her phone next to me, so I opened it to look at the photos. We had never been secretive with phones, so we didn't give any thought to secrecy, privacy, etc. Looking through recent photos, I noticed several of her in our garden looking seductive and partially undressed over the preceding few weeks. There was a series of four selfies taken over a period of about 10 minutes the previous week. One in a bikini frowning, one in a bikini smiling, one bikini top off, but lying on the front smoldering and breasts partially covered, no nipples on the show, one over shoulder selfie with pants off so I can see their bum over her shoulder. Having never before dug through her phone or even wanted to, my instant reaction was one of excitement that she was feeling sexy and had taken these. I got excited that there may be more and more explicit in her hidden folder. I opened up her hidden folder to find about 16 photos of one of her male work colleagues, various of him in his garden smiling selfies, one without a shirt on, one where he is in her car in work clothes, and she has taken the photo of him smiling. There were no other pictures in the hidden folder, just him. I got a huge shock and was fairly instantly crushed. I shut the phone and put it down, immediately feeling guilty for looking in the first place. I kept quiet for a day or so while I stewed on it. I got some evidence of the photos of her but didn't think to get the photos of him. As I thought about it, I convinced myself she was cheating on me and that I needed to confront her as we were likely to need to divorce. Two days after seeing the photos, I confronted her about it. Initially, she denied knowing anything about it. She kept this up for a while. She claimed she had no idea why or how these photos were in the hidden folder. Prior to this incident, we had an okay a sex life. However, she never initiated sex and was quite passive and prudish, never really offering much when I tried to mix things up or find out what she liked. I'd always just assumed that she was more sexually repressed than me, and I loved her so much and was so certain she was committed to me that I was totally accepting of our different levels of sexual desire. Having found the photos and confronted her, we had lots of long conversations with her, ultimately apologizing for hurting me, but not acknowledging that she had done anything wrong. Still claiming no idea why or how the photos were in a hidden folder. The conversations were long and quite fatiguing, and after some weeks I basically accepted her apology, and we agreed to work on our difference in sexual desire. Over time, life, kids and routines returned to more normal. However, every day since then, I have still thought about the betrayal I felt. Our SX life is effectively exactly the same as it was before this. We still get on well most of the time, and we have three wonderful kids who are none the wiser. In the three years since, there have been two further periods when I have not been able to ignore my hurt any longer. The last time was in October of last year when I felt obliged to go to work, where the colleague she had hoarded photos of was also going. I told her I felt really uncomfortable, but I agreed to go. Afterward, I was unable to think clearly, and we had to revisit things again. At this point, over two years after the initial incident, she changed her story about why she had put the photos in the hidden folder, admitting she did feel attracted to him, but there was nothing else that happened. She stated her attraction was based on how loving he was with his family, how much he talked about them at work, and how much he focused on them. I'm writing now because I still can't let it go. I love her deeply and don't want to lose her.
However, I don't think she has any sexual desire for me and may be stringing me along, though I'm not sure why, as I have calmly given her multiple opportunities to walk away or change the relationship. I don't think she has done any more photo, text or emotional cheating, but she remains sexually very cool and reluctant with me. It's really hard to be objective and make sensible decisions. I'd really welcome thoughts from people who have been in a similar situation. Have I been cheated on? Am I right to feel betrayed? How can I get her to open up and be honest about why she is sexually cold with me, but sexually adventurous in her own photos and stored pictures of her colleague in the hidden folder? Comment Golden Dragon, yes bro, you have been cheated on. It's definitely emotional cheating for sure. Because those sexy photos were not sent to you, so they were sent to him. The other evidence is her having sexy pictures of him, telling you that she received his pictures too. So, they are communicating back and forth through messages. The hidden folders tell you that these were illicit activities, not to be known to you and his wife slash partner. So you both are betrayed. You going to such events with the affair partner makes you uncomfortable because his presence reminds you of the betrayal, and you both never deal with this issue. It's likely that she had a physical affair as well. She saw him at work often enough. And they can lie to their spouses about work when they took off to have a sex at a motel the whole day, and you just may never know. Another point why I think she may have a sex with him before, aside from the comfort of sending sexy pictures, is how her sexual desires for you dropped to none. This means she has received fulfillment elsewhere from her affair partner. What should you do? I would investigate. Prepare for the end of your marriage. She kept cheating on you and has no remorse. This means she doesn't desire reconciliation because she doesn't see her actions as hurtful and betrayal. Also, very important. Please do a DNA test on your children. You just don't know how many affairs she had. What you uncovered is just the tip of the iceberg.